Bickley and Murata. Bickley and Murata mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bickley Blast. We all knew Monday night was going to be a funeral. I just assumed it would be reserved for the Pac-12 and not the Phoenix Suns. Now, a quick disclaimer. Today's blast is not about intellect or analysis. It's not what I think. It's what I feel. And watching last night's fourth quarter against the Clippers was about as dark and depressing as any basketball I've absorbed in quite some time. Because even after that Game 7 loss to Luka, even after bending the knee to Nicola and the Nuggets, there was still plenty of hope and belief in the future but after last night I'm not so sure anymore the Suns have no real leaders Devin Booker doesn't look like he's having any fun at all their turnover tendencies scream for a real point guard and they may have traded for the wrong wizard Bradley Beal doesn't look like a superstar to me rather just one of about 50 really good offensive players in the NBA and finally this coaching staff the one Matt Ishbia loaded up with high priced high profile assistance well color me unimpressed i don't see range i don't see adjustments i don't see any defensive system or collective acumen and on offense i don't see much movement or any real plays being run but again i'm also in a real bad place very fearful that this team is going to struggle to make the playoffs and a team that has virtually no shot of winning at all this year now before last night's game clippers head coach ty Lu said the suns are going to be hell when they finally get it together and i I hope he's right, because right now, Purgatory is watching an alleged super team perform like the worst fourth quarter team in the league. And that's not opinion, folks. Those are the facts. All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW. Make luxury attainable. Find them online at ChapmanBMW.com. Nah, we're all pros in here. We got multiple guys that have been in the league for five plus years. So if I got to tell them what's coming next, then I don't think I should have to tell them what's coming on, what the season's about. I think everybody here is experienced enough to know what the flow of the season looks like. And, um, you know, we trust guys to just come to work. No matter how you feel, no matter what happens, what's on your mind, you still got to get up and go to work. That, that holds true for everybody in here. So I think that's the approach we have as individual players with that. Regardless of what happens, we still got to go in there and be the best we can be every day. That's Kevin Durant. After last night's loss, Durant had 30 points and a 27-point loss to the uh, Clippers, their worst loss in terms of point differential on the season. Uh, a lot of the same issues that have been plaguing the Suns throughout this year popped up again, defending the three-point shot, rebounding, blocking out, uh, all of those things. And the fourth quarter was, I mean, yesterday, Bick, coming out of the Memphis game, the view, uh, the, 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 the point of view on Vinny's view was, why is there always seemingly one quarter that goes south for the Suns yeah. in, in these losses? Yeah. That is now the eighth. They, did they lose the game because of the fourth quarter? No. Were they in the game in the fourth quarter? Yes. They got to within seven, and then the wheels fell off. Uh, had they played even in the fourth quarter last night, they still would have lost that game. But it was another quarter another 12 mm -hmm. minute period of basketball where whatever the Suns were doing just stopped happening and yeah. to Kevin Durant's point in that soundbite mm -hmm. that's what makes this right now in 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 real time puzzling is the amount of veteran leadership on this team yeah. there are a lot There's of experienced veterans. guys I don't know if they're leaders well that and, and that's the point point. Mm -hmm. and I said earlier that you know Devin Booker's got to be the guy and that might be a little bit unfair it can't all fall on the shoulders not of Devin Booker if he's not Booker. a natural born leader we've been through this with Kyler Murray he, yes he's, he's had to train himself to be a good leader yes but you know he also and had you know if he's that yet he had three seasons learning from one of the best leaders that the NBA has ever seen in Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. And I think that is an invaluable experience for a player who is still climbing, who is still improving his game. Now, Devin Booker's not playing his best basketball right now. I no, think we he's can not. all agree on that. Yes. But maybe tap into some of those Chris Paul, you know, e yes. lessons that, that were learned. E yeah. And when you reach a, a point like this, and it sounds dire, you, the way we're talking, you would think, wow, the Suns are <laughs> five wins on the year. They're 19 and 18. This is still salvageable, but to get to the point where it's salvageable, 
a lot of hard truths have to be faced I agree by the that. coaching staff, I by the players that. individually, by the players collectively, and maybe by the front office. Well, and and I was uh, I was having a text ex- exchange with uh, with a longtime Suns fan, and it was interesting where this went because we both agreed that that Kevin Durant is in the midst of a very 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 excellent individual season. The numbers back it up. He last night, like you said, looked like it could have been a forty point game. But last night, as you watched the game, there was a lot of humorous uh, smack talk going on between Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. It was really, and you could tell KD was kind of enjoying it and whatever. There were questions after the game about, to KD, about Draymond Green and what Draymond said in a podcast about KD and how he was hurt by KD's comments. And then there were questions about James Harden and how things ended poorly in Brooklyn. And the contention was that as great as Kevin Durant is, we all know he's not a leader. It's not in him. He's a great player. He's not a leader. And he'll freely admit that. And he'll freely admit that. But, but, I, there's also a feeling among Suns fans, and fair or not, but there's a feeling that he's not ours. He's an he's a developed brand who has been part of lots of teams, and and some have been successful, some have been failures, but but we're just another uh, another place on the map for KD. Now I'm not saying it's accurate, but I'm saying that w- in in listening to him talk in the in the just the. the uh, the lack of people standing up and saying this is unacceptable and and i don't even know what the value of it is but i think fans would love to hear that fans would love to hear that these players are as bummed out about this as they happen to be if for nothing else you're exactly right the fans are frustrated and when you hear this constant oh we got to do this we got to do that Mm -hmm. it goes still a lot of time left it's Mm -hmm. a long season uh, the marathon is quickly becoming a sprint. It is. It is. Whether and you want to face it or not. Yeah, and again, I think maybe maybe you and I both placed too much importance on last night's game, but last yesterday during the show, you said that if KD comes back and it's their big guys against our big guys and both teams are on the second of back-to-backs and both teams are coming off losses they want to shake off, that this is a pretty big game. And I felt that way about last night's game. I felt this is a pretty big game. This is sort of a referendum on, on what this team can summon against one of the best teams in the West. Sun's record against the best teams in the Pacific, not very good. And the best teams in the Western Conference, not very good. No, and it was across the board, too. If you want to go big three against big three, Clippers, major advantage. If you want to go big against big, Evita Zubats completely outplayed Yusuf Nurkic. If you want to go fifth starter against fifth starter, Terrence Mann completely outplayed Grayson Allen. If you want to go bench against bench, Clippers bench dominated the Suns bench. I mean, it was it was across go, the board. And you want to go coach against coach? Ty Lue dominated Frank Vogel from the fact that Ty Lue continues to to trap and tangle up the big three of the Suns or the big two, whoever the Suns have out. They've got they've got a real solid defensive plan. They're throwing at Phoenix that's working. And and so this is and maybe it's the fact that the Clippers have found elevation that that's adding to my sour mood because this was a team that I thought was in our rearview mirror at least temporarily. Yeah, and when the Harden deal went down, and people said, "Wow, what are you doing? You're gonna you're gonna welcome that guy yeah, into your mix, right?" And they've stayed healthy, and it took a They're little bit of time. The ball. They took a little bit of time to find their footing, but relatively quick compared to what the process has been here in Phoenix. Yeah. And, and once again, I say this all the time. I know that 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 sometimes it drives you nuts when I gloss over a lot of uh, other players and other teams. But Kawhi Leonard, man, do I love watching that guy play basketball. He doesn't say a word. He doesn't complain about anything. He has just got maybe the strongest pair of hands. You put that basketball, and he, he's just taking it from you. Mm-hmm. He just took it from KD last night. Took it from Book. He's he is such a great player. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.